Hello everyone, peace and love to you all. I hope you are all doing good despite the circumstances. So I don't even know what exactly I'm going to say. I don't even know where to begin or where this is gonna go. But I know I just knew I needed to come on camera today to say something and I'll let the Lord speak through me. But before we start, I just wanna say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you that you have blessed us to see a new day. May we continue to walk in the steps that you guide us to walk along. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so the world is filled with so many people today where they're just trying to find somewhere to fit in. They're just trying to find a place where they can feel like, yeah, this is my family, this is where I fit in. And if you feel like that, I just, I have good news for you today. Many of us don't feel like we belong. Many people, like, if you, if you look at a group of maybe say 10 people, I bet you there'll be one person in that group, at least one person, probably more than just one person, but there'll be at least one person amongst those 10 people that don't feel like they fit in. They don't feel like they belong. You know, you can try everything. You can try this, try that. You can say, oh, maybe this is my, this is my talent. This is where I fit in. You know, like, I don't know whether you believe in God or not, um, whether you believe in heaven or hell or not. There is a heaven. There is a hell. And heaven for sure is eternal. Hell, as to whether it's eternal or not, that will depend on the doctrine that you've been taught. And there is a truth and there is error. And the Lord wants us to seek out the truth. Today, what I wanted to speak to you about is the truth that I've been experiencing for myself personally. And this truth is all to do with heaven. It's all to do with a place that is not of this world. It's all to do with a destination where you can truly live free and feel like you belong. See, a lot of the time, a lot of people don't feel like they belong in the church. That's, I don't, I don't relate to that. Th that religion, that's not my, I don't relate to religion. I don't relate to, I'm an atheist because I don't, I can't relate to all of that. That's just not me. I don't relate to any church. Like, I don't belong in a church. That's just not me. My life is different. I'm, I'm just different. If you feel like that, if you feel like you're different, you don't belong, you, you don't feel like you belong in this world, you don't feel like you fit in, you don't feel like anything is, is, is yours in this world, you just feel like an outcast, I have good news for you. I have good news for you, my friend. Jesus loves you. You are who Jesus died for. Jesus didn't come for the perfect people who fit into this world. In John 14, verse one to three, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. In fact, actually in the King James Version, it says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And he says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. See, Jesus is in heaven at the moment. And we're on earth, we're in this world. But Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, would Jesus have said that if there was no reason for him to say that? Now, I understand the reason why Jesus told his disciples, do not let your heart be troubled, is because there was much trouble to come. If you feel like that is what you're experiencing, you do not fit into this world, you do not fit into anything that this world has to offer you, I'm telling you right now, my friend, this world is not your home. See, we try so hard to fit in. We spend so much of our time trying to look good, trying to, to, to get the latest this, trying to do this, trying to be this, trying to be that, trying to be a YouTuber, trying to do this, trying to be a that, trying to be a this, just so we can fit in somewhere that we can call our title, our home, our friends, our family. We even spend so much time trying to fit in a church 
So many Christians will spend so much time trying to fit in the church so they can be called part of the church family. But I tell you, it's not the church that saves. Only Jesus saves. Jesus is the one who saves. His blood is what cleanses us of all our sins. And if you feel like you do not belong, you do not know where to go, you just, just don't belong in this world, I have good news for you, my friend. Jesus died for you and he wants you to come home. He's prepared a place for you and he just wants you to come that he may wash you in his blood and open the gates for you to come home. So please do not sit in, in this world, do not sit in just despair and, 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 and feel hopeless and feel like, well, I'll never fit in. Please understand, my friend, the problem is not you. See, I, I, actually, I actually feel so strongly about this that I rejoice when the world rejects me. He doesn't say I'll be loved by everyone. That's not what he promised me. He didn't promise me, uh, 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 he didn't say you have much, much riches. He didn't say in this world you would achieve so many good things. No, you are God in yourself. You are this, you, you deserve this, you deserve that. You, you deserve riches. Abraham was a rich man, so you deserve to be rich. Jesus didn't promise me that. Oh no, that was not his promise. His promise was in fact the very opposite to everything that has been taught in many churches today. You know, I did, an, I did a video not too long ago where the Holy Spirit was just moving in me and speaking and, and it was making me come to a realization that what is wrong with the churches today? Why are they not teaching us the things that are in the Bible? Why are we not being taught the truth? What is going on? And that's why so many people feel like they don't relate to the church. So many people feel like they don't belong in the church because the truth is not being taught. But see, God came for you and me who do not belong in the church. He came for you and me, who are the church. He came for you and me, who are the sinners. He came for you and me, who are imperfect. He came for you and me, who do not fit in this world. He came for you and me, who feel like we are outcasts in this world. That's who we came for. He came for you and me, who are set on the streets and people walk past like they do not see us. See, the world doesn't see Jesus. And if the world doesn't see you, my friend, it's because you are a child of God. If the world walks past you and just continues to walk and you are walking the opposite way and you're thinking, but this makes no sense. It's because you are a child of God. So rejoice, my friend, and be of good cheer because Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I'm telling you, and I'm, I say this without a doubt, and I speak, I speak the truth that God has placed in my heart. And I say this without a doubt. I need you to listen to me today because... You may have lived your whole life feeling like you do not belong in the church. You may have lived your whole life feeling like, well, this Jesus, I don't relate to him. I don't understand him. You may feel your whole life like I've gone to this church and that church, but I don't belong. I don't understand. Is something wrong with me? No, nothing is wrong with you. In fact, many of us that become part of churches and we feel like we belong, we're being deceived more than we realize see the ones who don't necessarily feel like they belong in the church you are just hungry for the truth and the truth is not being taught in the church today unfortunately the truth is not being taught like it should be and your soul tells you that something isn't right your soul tells you something isn't right this gospel doesn't make sense to me it doesn't sound like good news I'm telling you this is good news and although the troubles in this world will come, that is a part of this good news. It doesn't promise us the best life ever in this world. It doesn't promise us that we will live like kings and queens in this world. It doesn't promise us that we will get cars and houses and, and fame and fortune in this world. Oh no! It says in this world we will have much trouble, much trials. So be of good cheer, my friend, because what is awaiting you in heaven is a treasure like no other. Treasure, is it money, is it cars, is it what, anything that this world can offer you. This world will be destroyed someday, absolutely. Nothing in this world will be of any meaning whatsoever someday soon. See, our world is already broken anyway. This world, I don't want to say our world because this world is not my home. This world is already broken. The Lord doesn't care much for this world no more. He's given it up to the enemy. The enemy can do what he wants with it. But you and me, he cares about. You and me, we're his possession. He's not going to let go of us. 
because he cares about us but he has another kingdom that is built that will live on forever and ever to eternity his kingdom is like no other and he wants you and me in it because there's no use to have a kingdom that is majestic and wonderful if you and I are not in it. We are his treasured possession. You and me, we are the one he cares about. He does not care much for land and property and this and that. He does not care much for anything. Just you and me, our loyalty is all he asks for. And quite frankly, our loyalty, he deserves more than anything else. He has already given up his life for us. He has already shown us how much he loves us. He has already laid down his life for us and say, here is a gateway. The door is open. Just take my hand. Just say, yes, you want me as your Lord and Savior. And I will pull you through right through my gates. I will take you away from the hands of the enemy. And I will bring you to myself. And you will be mine. Just remain loyal to me and my word. And I will make it okay again. When we reject the truth, when we reject Jesus, we only fail ourselves. We're only playing ourselves when we say, well, I'm cho I choose not to believe. Believing is a choice. And I would urge you to please get to know Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Because he is the only one that can save us. Mankind, we cannot save ourselves. You are not God and I'm, I certainly am not God. I cannot save you and you certainly cannot save me, my friend. Your blood cannot save me and my blood cannot save you. We are only saved by grace. Only the blood of Jesus can save you and me. Nothing else in this world can bring us salvation but the blood of Jesus. As the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. God doesn't want you to die, my friend. He wants you to live forever. God doesn't want a single soul to perish. In those words, it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge because we do not know. We do not know how much he loves us. We do not know how much he has prepared for us. We do not know the word that is true and it's not being taught in the churches. Oh, how it pains my soul to know that the churches are deceiving so many into the gates of hell, so many into death. But I know my God has a plan because my God has promised me victory. And the plan begins with you and me. We need to begin to share the truth. We need to speak the truth that is in this word of the gospel. Because if we are not doing that, then who's going to do it? Who's going to share the truth? Who's going to tell the person next to us if we don't tell them? So please, please, my friends, for goodness sake, for the sake of yourself, for the sake of your children, for the sake of your soul, for the sake of your life, I urge you to accept Jesus that you too may be saved, that your place in heaven will be yours. Don't let the enemy take it from you. Please accept Jesus, give him your life and serve him. And right now, I just wanna say a prayer with you. If you've been listening to this and you've been feeling like something has been, has been urging you to really truly dedicate your life to Jesus and to get to know him and to have a personal relationship with him and to know the truth of what his gospel teaches, if you feel like you've just been waiting to know Jesus and even with all that you see and, and you're, you're finally feeling like something is waking you up and saying, actually, I, I need to know God. I need to, I need to be saved. You feel like you don't fit in and, and you just want to find your family. Jesus is your family. And if you feel like that, just say this prayer with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, I know you came in the image of Jesus to die for my sins I just right now I, I just want to acknowledge that I have caused pain I have caused you pain dear Lord I am a sinner I just confess right now and acknowledge my position in bringing you to this world and shedding your blood I recognize that I have sinned. Please forgive me. I want to come home. I want to belong to your family. I want to be your servant. I want to be your child. I want to be with you when you come again. So please forgive me and take me. Please help me overcome my sinful nature. Please help me overcome myself. I don't want to be like this anymore. I can never fit into this world. I just need you, oh Heavenly Father. 
please come. Please come into my heart. Just speak your own words to the Lord and invite him into your heart. Lord, by the blood of Jesus, I pray that you cleanse your people right now as they are praying to you and giving themselves up to you. May your blood bring salvation unto them, O oh Lord. May they receive you into their hearts really and truly and give themselves up to you. May you cleanse them of all sin and help them walk through the path of righteousness. May your righteousness be with us, Lord. For your name's sake, may we walk in the path that you have set before us. Dear Jesus, I just want to thank you right now for the good news. I want to thank you and I pray that your good news shall really resurface and come back. That we may hear your truth and know the truth. We just pray and we commit ourselves into your hands, your faithful hands. For we know that you have us and the devil can never never ever take us away from you no enemy no destruction nothing not even death can take us away from your hands oh god so we just give you glory and we praise you use us to do your work oh lord use us to do your will in jesus name amen thank you for listening i just pray that this message has meant something to you i just want you to know how much Jesus loves you. He will never let any harm come to you. If you really want to know Jesus, please grab a Bible. Now we have the internet. You can access the Bible in any way, shape or form. Study the truth. Many people go into a church because now they want to get to know Jesus. So they feel like they have to go and connect to a church. And by all means, that's good. But at the same time, many of the churches these days are not teaching the truth. So more than likely, they end up misleading the young Christians. They end up misleading us. They don't teach us the truth. And then we fall back into living into this world. One last message. I just want you to know that even with all the deaths happening, see, even all the saints, what, they gave up their lives to serve Jesus. They were murdered. They were killed. They were persecuted, they were tortured. But my God in his word says he's the God of the living. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So I want you to know when you give your life to Christ, see that cross? That was the death for all who accept him. That was the death for all humanity. That was the death to sin that we all have experienced when we accept Jesus. That was the death to our flesh. So now we are the living, living vessels of Jehovah. And even if our bodies may die temporarily, and quite frankly, the Lord describes it as sleep. He says we go into deep sleep because it's not death for us anymore. Because he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So I just want to bring comfort to anyone who's maybe lost family members in this time. If you've lost anyone close to you and you are just um, currently mourning, I want you to mourn with hope. And I want you to pray with assurance. Knowing that your God is the God of the living. His word says so. You will surely see your friends and family again who have died in the Lord. I, will, I should say who have gone to sleep in the Lord. Who have gone to rest in the Lord because they are merely asleep and someday soon we will be reunited and reconciled to our God and to our loved ones. So take courage, take strength from the word of God, be strong, do not let go of the truth and the promises that the Lord has given us. Stand firm on this truth because this is the only truth that matters. This is the only truth, the only promise that matters. So please do not lose hope, do not lose faith. And instead, be of good cheer, for I have good news that is not of this world. Stay blessed, everyone. And may the peace and favour of our Heavenly Father be with you. In Jesus' name.